Welcome back. Right, the foundation of the boat is done now. All the painting, all that sort of stuff. What we need to do now is start putting bits of electronics in, aerials, all them sort of things, all the all the luxuries now. And what we've done off camera as well, we've we've cut some nice sort of reliefs in these so we can get our hands in, and then when we're bouncing across the waves, we've got something to hold on to. Right, let's try and figure out this puzzle of where everything's going to go because you can only fit it once, you can only drill one hole can't you, so right let's have a look at it. So we know on the boat last time we didn't like the position of our chart plaster did we? No, well we basically put it right in front of the driver and then no one else could really use it once we were driving. So Simon's going well, which way are we going? I'm like well I don't know because I can't see. Yeah, so We've got one of these. We've got a Scanstrut deck pod. Mm. Now these deck pods are awesome because they actually rotate and tilt and stuff like that. So you actually go straight inside and uh. then it mounts onto there, which mounts that then mounts on the deck. Yep. So that mounts on the deck, it screws onto there and then you unlock it and you can turn it and tilt it and 360 degrees sort of rotate it. It's the first time I've seen it, it's actually just pretty cool. To and me. that is that is solid, isn't it? That yeah, is pretty. There's a proper bit of engineering that. So I'm really happy with this. Yeah. Lovely black and you know, nice shiny silver and stuff. But that is gonna stick out like a sore thumb on the top of our deck with the colour of our boat. So this needs a raptor treatment, doesn't it? <laughs> Brand spanking new and Gemma's gonna paint it. <laughs> yeah, because white's gonna look it, you know. Yeah, yeah. We want it just to blend in with the boat and yeah. not stick out like a big mm. sore thumb. And yeah, obviously, white inside the boat's great, but outside on the deck, not so much. Right, so we're gonna give it all a quick prep with some green scotch. And then once we've done that, we've got rid of all the shiny. Then we're gonna put a plastic adhesion promoter, is that what it's called? Plastic primer adhesion promoter. Time to paint your boat parts. <laughs> Right, so the first thing that we're going to fit is our Scanstrut deck pod. All right, so what are you doing? Just checking my location. So, I think about there. So we've gone for it. So, offset from the driving position. So whoever's navigating can be over there. We can swivel it around to Gemma. And then when we're sat on our seat, we can still see through the windscreen okay. You happy with that position? So we'll put it there, and when, when we're sat on our seat here, watching Netflix, just like lounging, you know, when we're fishing, watching Netflix. Because <laughs> you can do that on the and then, axioms. And then you can sort of still see it from up there. So another reason we've not gone bang middle as well is because of, um, because in here we've got a rib on the ceiling and our ceiling goes straight to it so we'll need somewhere for the wire run to go so we're going slightly offset. Okay, you happy? let's drill a hole in the boat. Oh, I hate drilling holes in stuff, do you know what I mean? It's like you're committed then aren't you? We've got loads of holes to drill in this I know, boat yeah. so just bite the bullet and do it. So we've cut out the little template which is provided, it's got a little drilling template so I'm going to go for the centre first. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Now what we can do is remove the template because we know where the big hole is. Mm. 
So there we go, there's our deck pod fitted. So this is great to literally you can release it. Move it anywhere you want. And then you can lock it back off. And then I've got a tablet mount as well. So if I want to run anything else on my tablet, I don't know, or watch YouTubers driving along, <laughs> we've got space for the tablet. Right, let's go and see what else we can get fitted to the boat. Right, so we've been having a, a big debate on where stuff should go. Was so, we having a master debate? A master debate, yes. Yeah. So we've got these little dinky little spotlights because initially we weren't going to put any lights on it because we weren't going to go out in the dark, but you never know, dear. You? you could be stranded at sea or something like that. So we've got these little LED spreader lights and I think we're going to mount them here. So they're kind of like, this is completely dead space and like, I don't know. They look quite cute. Obviously we've got two, that'll give us a good spread of light. Alright, so that, that was the easy bit, we figured that out. But then where do you put the aerial? We've got this like, big aerial, we've actually taken it off the stand because it won't fit because of the height of the ceiling. So we've got this little, this little mounty thing. So we've been having a debate about will the windscreen interfere with it, but let's get, it's a good meter above the windscreen once it's mounted. I don't think it's going to affect it. So do we mount it like here, even though the driving position's over there, but will it affect line of sight? I think no matter where it goes, it could potentially affect line of sight. So I think if we keep it close, then it'll kind of blend in with the windscreen. We can have it at the same angle, the windscreen. And, and why? Won't. Why wouldn't you put it on the passenger side? Oh, because when I want to get to the front for when we've got to mess around with anchors and stuff like that, because we're bound to have to go on the bow for some reason, um, the last time we had the aerial on, it was sort of always in the way and it really sort of whipped me and stuff like that. It really affected me climbing round. So I want to keep the port side completely unobstructed for climbing forward. Basically a safety thing. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to go around here somewhere. Or would you put it there? I don't think it makes that many odds. What do you think from a from an aesthetic point of view? I can't really visualise it without the actual... The big sticky bit. Should we get the big sticky bit? Go on then. So there's the big sticky bit. Um, so, does it, would it look better if it was... The big sticky bit was there. Which you can manipulate the angle of it from, from the driving position as well. And you can take it off as well, from standing there rather than having to climb forward or whatever. Okay, stick it back. There. Slide it back forward. There. So it's too late for the viewers at home to make this decision. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be very pretty. Right, so Jim is now captain. Captain's position. So it's going to go there. Or there. Doesn't make any difference. Yeah. There? Yeah, it's less in your field of vision. When you're looking when you forward. Yeah. <laughs> what we've opted for is some scan strut cable gland seal. So I think they have a come with all different, you can see the different size holes there. But they come with one which is pre fitted, which is actually a blank. So what we've done is drilled our own holes in the blank so we can technically put two cables through one hole. Yeah, check that out. So that goes on now. So while we're on to fitting all our scan strut stuff, I may as well do a few other bits. So I've got a wireless phone charger. So literally you can hook your phone in a cradle and charge it. So I think I'm going to put that here. Because obviously we're going to have our steering wheel there. Maybe some 
digital outreads for our engine. So I'm going to put it there. And then I've got a USB um, socket, which is all waterproof. In case my iPad needs charging, I'm thinking of putting that there. There we go, our scan strut stuff's all fitted. So we've got everything that we're gonna need here. So obviously we've got our chart plotter, my tablet holder, waterproof USB, and a wireless phone charger. So all we need to do now is get them all wired in when we get to the electric stage. Right, because we're building a fishing boat, we need somewhere to put our rods, don't we? So. Uh, when I first bought the boat, it came with these ones. So these ones basically popped in there, they crude. Somebody had like hacked these, hacked these holes out with a drill bit, but we may as well go a bit stronger, aren't we? So we've got, we've got these very, very, very posh ones. But we need to make a bigger hole to make them fit in, don't we? So yeah, Gem's working like right underneath now, and I've, I've got the easy job. All I've got to do is spin the Allen key in a second. Go on, do it and spin. Yeah? Yeah. Come back later to see if Simon finishes this mouthful of crisps. Well, it's almost dinner time, so... Um... Right, so now we're on to the point of fitting cleats. So we've got some nice um, shiny plastic ones. So we've decided that they're going here. We've mirrored it on the other side. Gemma has made sure there's access underneath. So that's on Gemma there. I can get my hands up there just. Okay. So basically all we need to do is make sure it's in the middle. Put some little drill holes through. And then... I'm not going to do it with that. I'm going to need the socket. Okay. Okay. Can you see me? I can just about see you. I can see the little camera screen. If I have to look close enough, I can see just about to see me. Can you see me having a wee in a bucket? No. Cool. That was the goal.
still working out the placement of all of our new rail blazer stuff. And we've got this, which is like a cup holder. And I thought, with these two nice seats at the back, they would be an ideal place for it. What do you think? <laughs> because so we'll have cup holders at the back. And then up here, we're going to have a cup holder each. So when you're up here, you've got somewhere to put your drinks. We're getting there now. So we've got rod holders and a little tackle cuddy there. We've got a bait table so you can cut your bait. But the really good thing about all this rail blazer stuff is you can just slide it off and you can chop and change it. So if I don't want my table here anymore, I can take it off and put some rod holders there instead. Okay, so I'm here at the transom. Uh, we need to fit our transducer. So this is a, a real vision transducer, so this can map the seabed. So it gives, also gives our depth, our water temperature. Um, yeah, I don't think it does speed through water there, that's done by GPS. So uh, we need to mount it. Um, obviously it sticks out like that, but we want it to be able to fold up out of the way if we hit anything. Blah, 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 dead easy. I've already marked it. So me just to like line it all up. Put into our nice neat transom. I'm not sure if you can see how many how many wires there is in the transducer. There's definitely something very intelligent going on inside there, isn't there? Um, I think the wire is like big enough to fit a uh, to fit a syringe. <laughs> I'll go in and give it a pull. Oh, stuck on the wheel. So I put a little, a little flap on the transom because like, there's just a hole there basically. I think if you get like a wave and it fills up this, I'm going to call it like an engine bucket. But the way I see it, if we get like water coming in, it'll stop water going in, won't it? But it'll also let it out. So just a piece of rubber I had and I use some like windscreen adhesive to um, stick it on. Let's see what happens. Right, so what we need to do now is I think we need to take the boat outside and give it a good hose down and make sure there's no leaks in the cabin before we start putting all the headliner on and stuff and so let's push around. Wheel me out, Captain! found a leak. So just the one leak um, and that wasn't, that was a gland that we bought, it wasn't supplied by Ray Marine. Screw fix special. It was a screw fix special so we'll sort <laughs> that out but all the others, the windows don't leak. All the other, the scan strut stuff that we put in doesn't leak. Um, the windscreen... Doesn't leak. <laughs> so, we're really good. The nav lights don't leak. Mm. It's always good to do these tests, isn't it, really? Because sometimes, obviously, we're never ever going to get rain that heavy. But if it, if it passes that test, then it's good. But it's going to basically make everything last, isn't it? 
Okay. That's the plan. So, and one thing I thought we would have had more, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> just like, uh. Right. So, it could be a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> let's carry on cleaning the boat. So, I know a lot of people are worried about your console and we're like, oh, you need to put a drain all in. There is. There is. Do you want to there show is. us, bro? Can you see? There's a little drain down there, which then drains into the bilge. So you're always thinking, other people, I'm trying to get some light, other people were concerned about the windscreen with the gem. Yeah. Come on, give you, give you a quick test of that. So everybody was saying, oh, water's going to go in there and it's going to do funny things, maybe freeze and crack the pipe, but what we've done with drilled holes. So if you look down the bottom here, Having a lot of weight. Ah! <laughs> and you soaked me. <laughs> so they've got holes in the bottom of every single one. Yes. Yes, we've still got to put drain valves in. These are waterproof, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know why we're washing it properly, but it's already wet, isn't it? So there we go. It actually looks like a fishing boat now, doesn't it? With all our rail blazer stuff, all that is going to make fishing and keeping our rods in different locations dead easy because everything can be moved around so I'm really really happy and I'm really excited to be able to actually go and use them just one issue loads of rod holders we still haven't got a fishing rod <laughs> so that's the next problem the next job's coming up in the next video we are going to be doing all of the electrics because there is no wires in the boat yet so all the lighting wiring up all the chart plotter and things like that so that's going to be really good but there is still one big issue and one big thing missing. And I know you're going to say it's tie down straps for the boat on the trailer. But to us, the most important thing that is really missing is an engine and a steering wheel. So at the moment, we've got about 46 days until the fishing competition. So we've still got a lot to do and we've still got to learn how to fish. So come back next time and see where we're up to. This project wouldn't be possible without the support of some amazing companies. So we'd like to thank Ray Marine, Scanstrut and Railblazer for supporting us on this project. Thank you for watching. See you all soon.